Good Morning Scotland. Fresh from presiding over the most successful election campaign in the SNP, Peace history. It's back to business for the First Minister. Nicola Sturgeon is due to deliver a major speech outlining her economic priorities in Edinburgh later, emphasising her opposition to the Conservative government's austerity agenda. She's expected to unveil what's being called the Scottish Business Pledge, an idea she touched on when she spoke to business leaders back in December. Creating greater prosperity and fairness isn't something that any government can do alone. It has to be a shared national endeavour, and I'm asking you to be part of that. I want today to open up an ongoing dialogue with you about our shared ambitions and how we achieve those ambitions. Well, let's discuss this now with Bill Jamieson, founder and co-editor of the Scott Buzz website, and Ian McDougall, who owns an accountancy practice in West Distillery in Glasgow and is a member of the pro-independence organisation Business for Scotland. Morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Ian McDougall, um, what do you think businesses want to hear from the First Minister? Uh, I think they're looking to uh, get some more powers for Scotland so that we can reinvest in the country, uh, start looking at things like bringing in corporation tax, get control of the minimum wage, so we can start getting productivity in Scotland up. I think productivity in the UK is low, very low compared to the rest of the OECD countries, and I think we need to start getting productivity back up the way. How would, um, would that not cause problems for business if you have a different level of uh, corporation tax? here no, no. and the, from the other side of the border. Is that, is, would that not be more complicated for many businesses? No, not at all. I think what about it's not about just cutting the corporation tax rate, it's about reinvesting it. So you provide a reduction in corporation tax if you reinvest in things like, for example, like exporting and research and development. If you start investing in these things, then you start growing the economy by reinvesting in it, not simply make a cut in corporation tax levels. But if, if, you, if the government wants to, um, it d does not want to follow the austerity route that Westminster is following, then what do you do with that money? I mean, is that the best way of doing it? Won't there be many more <laughs> uh, you know, hands trying to claw that money back rather than it, it going back into the economy and into business the way you're suggesting? Yeah, I think it's accepted that there's many, many demands on government budgets. But I think it's also accepted that if you grow the economy and you grow business, uh, you also increase tax take as well. And if you can increase tax take, you can start reinvesting that in other areas of the economy and start investing that in other areas of services as well. So I, I think everybody agrees that, you know, by growing business, it's a good thing. Uh, and it employs people, it gets them to spend more money, gets them to put more money back in the economy, uh, which increases the tax take, which means we can then start reinvesting in other areas. Uh, Bill Jemison, does this, uh, the business pledge that we have heard some of uh, so far, in your view, does that suggest, uh, is that a good way to do, as, as A. McDougall says, to in reinvest in the economy and to grow the economy? Yeah. Listen, there's much to applaud in the social ambitions of this business pledge. It's full of aspiration. Very few people would disagree uh, with these social aspirations. But the problem here is that um, there are many searching questions to be asked about it. How much will it actually achieve uh, by way of the government's growth uh, objectives? Uh, how much will it encourage business to invest and expand? Um, and how do its ambitions relate to the real world of business? And I'm not sure there was a great deal of consultation uh, with the business organizations throughout Scotland. We have 340,000 businesses. Many of them um, are actually doing a very good job on um, internationalization, innovation, hiring younger people. Um, so it's very vague as to what precisely it will do to help our growth rate and stimulate the expansion that um, the government wants to see to achieve its social objectives. In McDougall, is there an issue with perhaps say, saying to all businesses, you know, we expect you to pay a living wage? And uh, I mean, a lot of these things are would mean businesses incurring cost, wouldn't they? Is it not the case that many businesses in Scotland would actually be facing the choice of either paying their current staff more or taking on maybe an extra member of staff. They can't afford to do both. No, I don't think that's the case. I, I think the reality is... is really? That, no, no, I, I think the reality is that many people need to move towards a living wage, and, and I think the whole idea of increasing it incrementally uh, makes sense, because if you... if 
everyone's increasing their wages, everyone's earning more in the living wage, then money's come back into the economy and it's come back into small businesses. And that's the reality. If more people are earning more money, they spend more money. They put it back into local businesses, they put it back into shops and restaurants, they put it back into tradesmen. So that money comes back down through the system. So Only if other costs aren't rising as well. Well, and the cost of living is falling. <laughs> well, funny, we're sitting in a period of deflation at the moment, so costs aren't really up at the moment. Uh, but the whole idea of increasing the, the living wage is to get that back up there and to give people a proper standard of living. And it also reduces the demand for benefits as well, which again is a good thing for the public purse. Uh, if more people are earning a living wage, not depending on benefits, then that can only be a good thing in terms of bringing down the costs of benefits as well. Do you think that there is a, an aspect to this, Bill Jemison, that perhaps um, if businesses are, are urged to pay their staff more, which which nobody would, would, would argue with, really, but is that a way of, of helping to boost, as Amy McDougall suggests, um, you know, the, 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 the social side of things as well, that it does make you perhaps less dependent on the state providing benefits yes. and welfare? Yes. Um, you know, uh, there is some room for dispute here because... We had a warning from uh, Sir George Bain. He's the founding chairman uh, of the low, the, uh, the low Pay Commission. And uh, he warned quite recently that introducing the living wage would cause, and his words, massive unemployment in sectors such as retail and social care. Now, again, I come back to this point about consultation with Scottish businesses. How much uh, um, soundings were taken, for example, with uh, our tourist um, uh, bodies like Visit Scotland on how the living wage would affect uh, employment in the sector. It is a very big issue. How you calculate it, how you work out what um, you know, how much everybody is going to be paid, um, is going to take you know an awful lot of time to uh, to arrive at. Meanwhile, the last thing you want to do is to um, is to increase unemployment. And we, we saw a bit of a, a nick up in uh, unemployment in the last month, up by 19,000. Um, this is not the time to be introducing or exhorting uh, businesses to um, lay people off. OK, well, thank you both very much indeed for, very much. for speaking to us this morning. Bill Jamieson there of Scott Buzz and Ian McDougall, um, who's a member of the pro-independence organisation Business for Scotland.